I'm saying? Uh, and Madame will introduce uh, their near Calgary. So they'll be asking a couple of questions. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, Madame Maikai, would you like to say, would you like to welcome us, please? Yes. Bonjour tout le monde. Bonjour, Monsieur Scheer. Bonjour les élèves et les parents. Et merci, Monsieur Tremblay. Thank you for being with us, Monsieur Scheer. Um, it was my pleasure. It's my pleasure to meet you again. Uh, we met this time last year when uh, you visited Vancouver. And it was my pleasure to meet your family and uh, your team and uh, to have an opportunity um, to have a quick word. And today uh, you get to meet my school family. And uh, it is my pleasure to introduce you my students, um, the grade five students, some are, some are grade six and sevens, and uh, they've taken time to prepare these questions. These are issues that matter to them. Um, they were happy that they have this uh, opportunity to think critically about um, what really matters in their world, especially in the time that we are living right now. And without further ado, I would like us to get started and uh, hear what they have to ask you. Thanks again. Great. And just as always, we are a Catholic school, and we like to start with a quick prayer. So please join me if you can. On our behalf, Edifice et du Saint Esprit, Amen. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses. Et nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous laisse pas entrer en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal. Amen. Au nom du Père et du Fils et du Saint-Esprit. Always praying and keeping all of our family and community members in our thoughts. And uh, they are really who uh, we're most concerned about. And I know that those questions will reflect that as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Shear, I apologize. I have a teacher here who would like to say a special thank you to you about something. Sure. Uh, he's been waiting for this. His name is Monsieur Luc Ben Bordeaux, the grade four teacher. Great. Uh, bonjour, Monsieur Shear. Uh, il y a huit ans, j'étais à Regina, Saskatchewan. Ah. Et j'avais vraiment des difficultés pour regrouper ma famille qui était restée en Afrique. Je les ai attendus pendant deux ans. Et quelqu'un m'a demandé d'aller vous, de, vous demander de l'aide dans vos services. Je suis allé un mardi et deux jours plus tard, la situation a été débloquée. Je n'ai jamais su que j'aurais l'opportunité de vous dire merci du fond du cœur. Je vous dis un grand merci. Et j'ai promis ce jour d'être toujours de votre côté. Je pense que le Canada a besoin d'un leader qui a un grand cœur comme vous. Voilà. Merci beaucoup, c'est euh, incroyable, euh, votre message, c'est bien précis, euh, c'est notre rôle comme député d'assurer de, de que les services du gouvernement fonctionnent pour les, les gens et, euh, et chaque fois que notre, nos adjoints, mon bureau peut aider quelqu'un comme vous, euh, ça, ça me renforce avec beaucoup de passion pour mon, mon rôle. Alors, merci beaucoup pour, pour votre mot et euh, c'est excellent que le, votre votre situation a été euh, réglée. Merci, je ne l'oublierai jamais. Merci, au revoir. Bienvenue, monsieur. Mon nom est Ayla, et cette question parle de votre vie. Mr. Scheer, we were very impressed about you becoming a member of the Parliament at age 25 and the youngest speaker in the House of Commons history at age 32. Can you tell us about your, yourself, your youth growing up in Ottawa, and what led you to the political, political career you have today? Well, sure. Well, I, I uh, merci beaucoup pour la question. Et uh, premièrement, uh, bonjour à tous. Uh, C'est un grand plaisir pour moi de vous adresser aujourd'hui. It's a, it's a privilege for me to be able to speak to you, and I'm just so thrilled to see so many uh, young people engaged in politics. I think it's an excellent initiative to, uh, to do exactly what you're doing, what your teachers are doing to, to start early conversations about how uh, government works, the role of government, and some of the issues that are being discussed. Uh, so I grew up in a very political household. Uh, my uh, my parents uh, always watched uh, the news, and we subscribed to newspapers and magazines, and we were always talking about what was going on in the world. And I had a bit of, a, uh, 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 a bit of an issue with authority when I was young. 
young. You know, I, I didn't, I, I, I like to question why I had to do things. And, and it, maybe it was a little bit, uh, sometimes it probably wasn't the best aspect of my personality. My, you know, if I asked my parents why I had to make the bed uh, too often, you know, I sometimes got in trouble for, for questioning the proper role of parents in the household. But uh, I, I soon realized that as you go out in the world, there are all kinds of rules. There are all kinds of rules about, you know, uh, how much you pay for uh, a service or good, you know, the what TV shows you can watch on TV and and uh, what what you can do at the beach. And there's just, there's rules everywhere you go. And uh I, I, I often question that. And so my parents told me uh, a very valuable lesson. They say, well, we live in a country where you as a citizen get to do something about the rules. It, it, you have to respect them. You have to uh, appreciate the fact that we live in a society and it's appropriate to have proper levels of authority in our lives to, uh, to, to, to create these rules. Uh, but your ancestors fought very hard for the right to have a say in what the rules are. You get to vote, you get to participate, and you get to, to decide who you want uh, to, to govern you and what kinds of rules you, you want. And so they channeled me, they took my anti-authoritarian kind of always questioning authority and they channeled it in a very positive way to say, get involved and do something about it. And, uh, and so I did. So I, I, when I was very young, I joined a political party and I started going to uh, meetings and policy workshops and things like that. Growing up in Ottawa, of course, the parliament buildings are here. I would go by them often, and I would often just go inside some days and, and, and watch question period, and I was always fascinated. So it, it piqued my interest very early. And one of the things I realized about politics is that very few people get engaged at very uh, all the way, you know. So, so you think about everybody who votes once every four years. Well, that's great. You know, we have millions of Canadians who vote. But deciding who the candidates are in a particular riding that's called a nomination meeting. Well, sometimes only a couple of hundred people show up to vote in that type of election. And uh, when you're electing a, a, an executive for that riding association, sometimes only 30 people vote up, uh, show up to that. So I learned that just showing up to these types of meetings, getting involved at the, at the kind of the building block stages of politics, gave you an ability to have a great deal of influence and a great deal of say. And once I got involved going to these types of things, I met a ton of wonderful people, uh, really found it rewarding and productive. And I, I could bring my passion about the things I care about deeply uh, into those types of uh, settings. And I was hooked. I, I was hooked. I, I, I loved debating and, and having polite arguments about different things. And, uh, and so I decided to pursue a career in it. Thank you. Thank you. Second seal apropos de la santé des jeunes. COVID led us to these Zoom interviews for young people who may be depressed or whose emotional and mental health is suffering from the lack of social interaction due to COVID. So uh, this is a huge issue that, that that's come to light with the lockdowns and the restrictions that have put into place. And I'm very worried about this because when I was first elected in 2004, the subject of mental health and, and mental well-being wasn't really part of the conversation when we were talking about healthcare. We always thought about healthcare as, you know, surgeries and wait times and cancer treatments and medication. And now over the last 10 years, we've done a lot of great work in including mental health in that conversation and making sure that mental health issues are treated the same way as physical issues. Uh, and unfortunately, we see when we're talking about preventing the uh, and, and minimizing the physical risk of COVID-19, uh, often I think we're missing some of the emotional and psychological damage that is being done to people who are finding themselves isolated uh, or cut off. Uh, and I know young people who, who, who get a tremendous amount of emotional support from things like organized sports. Uh, they're suffering right now because sports might have been an outlet for them. You know, if they had a, a difficult home life, if they were maybe not doing as well as they, they, they could have been in school, but sports was a way for them to kind of, you know, feel part of a community, part of a team. And that's now being eliminated in many areas. We're seeing a lot of negative effects. So one of the things that our party is trying to do is, is to highlight some, okay, fine. We, and when you bring in these restrictions to, to limit the spread of COVID-19, that's great. It's important. We need to do that, but we need to do it in a very targeted way so that we're not causing damage on other aspects of our health and well-being. And so we need to support municipalities, provinces, school boards who are trying to 
keep providing some of these types of activities for young people uh, so that we, they don't miss out on an entire year or even more of the great benefits that come from activities, sports, peer counseling, just face-to-face -face human interaction with, with, with others. So uh, this is something that's a work in progress, but something that we're, we're very, uh, very much focused on. This is great. Steph Kassoum, Pade Voto Kayer. How would you describe your experience working as leader of the Conservative Party and your time working in Parliament? What are your, what are you most proud of accomplishing? Now that Mr. Aaron O. Tool has taken over as Conservative Party leader, what are your continuing tasks currently and what are your future projects? Also, now that you are no longer the leader of the opposition, has this changed your view about politics in Canada? Uh, alors, merci beaucoup pour la question. Il y a beaucoup des aspects que euh, je peux adresser. Euh, euh, alors, euh, mon temps comme chef du parti était extraordinaire. Uh, my time as leader of the party was was extraordinary. It was a, a wonderful experience with with many many highs and some lows as well. Uh, everybody that I've ever spoken to who had been leader of the opposition. So I was fortunate. I, I was able to speak to several people who held the post of, of leader of the opposition, both, you know, both in our party and outside of our party. And they all say the same thing. It's the worst job in politics. It is the, it is the toughest role to have. Uh, it is a very high pressure role with, uh, with a great deal of responsibility, with not the same types of supports that being Prime Minister uh, comes with it, but all of the same types of, uh, maybe not all, but, but many of the same types of challenges in terms of managing a, a caucus, leading a team, connecting with Canadians. But it, it has the benefit of leading, perhaps, to becoming Prime Minister. So while it's very, very difficult while you're fulfilling the role, the, the, the hope and the aspiration of, of winning the election, becoming Prime Minister, kind of carries you through it. I learned a tremendous about, amount about myself, uh, about my own uh, uh, strengths and weaknesses and some of the things I needed to do to address to, 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 to do better. Um, I, 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 one of the best things about it is I got to visit literally every corner of Canada. I, I was able to, to go from, you know, large urban centers like downtown Toronto, to Vancouver, wonderful communities in, in the greater Vancouver region to Iqaluit, uh, to uh, Labrador, you know, literally almost every type of community in Canada. I was able to meet some wonderful, wonderful people and I'll cherish those memories for, for the rest of my life. Um, now that I'm not leader of the party, uh, oh yes, my, my greatest accomplishments, uh, I, I believe our electoral success, while it fell short of our goal, winning the popular vote and becoming the first person in Canadian history to get more votes than a Trudeau uh, was uh, something that I was particularly proud of. And uh, and some of the policy accomplishments that we made as well. Uh, the, the government was trying to impose uh, some very punitive taxes on small businesses that would have had a terrible effect on many, many entrepreneurs and family run businesses the, through the strength of our opposition working with with uh, grassroots people from across the country, we're able to, to stop uh, most of that. Um, now that I'm not leader of the party anymore, uh, I am uh, the shadow minister for infrastructure. So it's my job to look at what the minister of infrastructure is doing and holding her to account, finding out where the money's going and, and why it's taking so long to get big projects built, and then to propose our solution, to talk about what we would do differently and how a conservative government would get infrastructure projects built in this country in a better way. And I'm, I'm really enjoying uh, that role and I'm excited to, uh, to work with my new leader, Aaron O'Toole and, and our team to uh, put, present that vision to Canadians and, and earn their support in the next election. Ma question est à propos de la famille. Vous avez des enfants qui ont le même âge que nous ou presque. Qu'enseignez-vous à vos enfants pour bien communiquer, avoir de l'empathie et penser de façon critique? Aussi, nous aimerions savoir si vous avez des idées pour les familles qui souffrent d'avoir perdu un emploi à cause du COVID ou les familles avec deux parents qui doivent travailler. Alors, vous avez raison, j'ai cinq enfants. Le plus vieil, c'est Thomas et elle a 
15 ans, euh, presque 16 ans, et ma plus petite, c'est Mary, et elle a 5 ans. Euh, alors, euh, une, une grande différence entre eux. Et euh, c'est l'aspect de mon, mon rôle comme euh, euh, chef de l'opposition qui, qui, qui était le plus difficile, parce que euh, les, les, les besoins sur mon temps, les, les demandes sur mon temps comme chef, c est, c est, c est, euh, il y a sans limite. Il y a toujours un événement que quelqu'un veut que j'attends. Je, je, euh, il y a toujours une personne qui a besoin d'un appel de téléphone. Il y a toujours une, une réunion que, que je peux euh, participer dedans. Euh, alors, c'était très, très difficile de gérer mon temps pour assurer que j'étais là pour mes enfants, que je suis là pour les soupers, là pour les, les fêtes, les événements. Ma question est à propos de la famille. Vous avez des enfants qui ont le même âge que nous ou presque. Qu'enseignez-vous à vos enfants pour bien communiquer, avoir de l'empathie et penser de façon critique? Aussi, nous aimerions savoir si vous avez des idées pour les familles qui souffrent d'avoir perdu un emploi à cause du COVID ou les familles avec deux parents qui doivent travailler. Alors, vous avez raison. J'ai cinq enfants. Le plus vieux, c'est Thomas. Et il a 15 ans, presque 16 ans. Et ma plus petite, c'est Mary. Et elle a cinq ans. Alors, une, une grande différence entre eux. Et c'est l'aspect de mon, mon rôle comme chef de l'opposition qui, qui, qui était le plus difficile parce que euh, les, les, les besoins sur mon temps, les, les demandes sur mon temps comme chef, c est, c est, c est, il y a sans limite. Il y a toujours un événement que quelqu'un veut que j'attends. Je, je, euh, il y a toujours une personne qui a besoin d'un appel de téléphone. Il y a toujours une, une réunion que, que je peux euh, participer dedans. Euh, alors, c'était très, très difficile de gérer mon temps pour assurer que j'étais là pour mes enfants, que je suis là pour les soupers, là pour les, les fêtes, les événements familiaux. Euh, et alors, mon, mon, mes conseils, euh, le nouveau chef et quelqu'un qui, euh, qui aspire d'être un chef du parti ou, un, ou même un député, c'est d'assurer que vo votre famille a un une, euh, une espace spécial dans votre horaire. Euh, donne un impératif à vos emplois de protéger le temps pour la famille. S'il si y a quelque chose sur le samedi après-midi, ça c'est sanctifié. Ça c'est, euh, il ne peut pas toucher parce que euh, après mon carrière professionnelle, euh, je dois avoir une famille. Euh, je, je ne veux pas perdre mon famille euh, pour quelques années de, de politique et trouver que comme un, un homme de 60 ans que j'ai brisé ma famille, j'ai perdu contact avec mes enfants. Alors ça, c'est euh, un, un aspect essentiel. Et euh, pour J'espère que je, je, je peux um, assurer que uh, one of the things I, I hope I was able to do with my children, having them in a political life is to teach them to be critical thinkers. Uh, and especially when it looks, you know, you think about sources of information. Uh, we have a, a particular um, viewpoint that is often presented in the mainstream uh, media. And what I've taught my children is to always be critical of that, to, to, to analyze that and not to accept it. Just because you see it on TV uh, doesn't mean that you should accept it without without some critical analysis, uh, because there is always going to be a, a worldview or, or, or a, a mindset that is presented to you. And you need to look through an objective lens and say, okay, well, this is what they said on the news last night. This is what the newspaper said. I'm going to double check, you know, I'm going to look and see what, what, what that person actually said. I'm going to look for the primary source and read it myself. And, and in doing that, you'll make sure that you're getting a, uh, a, uh, a more accurate representation of, of the facts, or at least, or at least to, to, to look for other sources of, of news information to, to see what the other side is saying. You know, if, if, if this newspaper says this, what does somebody else say? And, and, and make up your own mind as to what is actually accurate. I think we need to have some real critical analysis on what's being presented uh, from the mainstream media. Merci, thank you. Merci. Oh, uh, sorry, and it's, you asked a question about uh, message to uh, families who may have lost a job uh, through COVID. This is one of the most difficult issues about this uh, pandemic is th there are always economic 
difficulties that are presenting itself through different aspects of the economy. And, and many times, you know, we have a social safety net in Canada. If somebody loses their job, they have access, normally they have access to an employment insurance. This is something where people are losing their job because of government mandates. You know, government says to restaurants, you're not allowed to open. They tell a, a, a massage therapist, you're not allowed to, to see clients because we need to limit the spread of this pandemic. So people are losing their livelihood through no fault of their own. It's, it's not that they were providing a service that nobody wanted. It's not that their products were bad. The government is literally telling them that they're not allowed to conduct uh, business. And it's causing a lot of friction right now in, in, in many communities. And, and many people are frustrated watching their life savings disappear and, 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 and be eaten up uh, because of government orders. That's why our party is very supportive of measures. If government is going to tell you you're not allowed to conduct your business, then government should provide some kind of support to those people that are affected by it. We worked very hard to increase the wage salary. There's a program that the government came out with to help businesses play, pay their salaries. If they were not seeing customers come through the door, the government was helping them pay their staff salary. They initially set that at just 10%. And we said, that's not going to be enough to keep people employed. So we worked very hard and, and we were able to get that 10% lifted up to 75%. So we are constantly putting forward ideas to help people get through this pandemic so that people don't lose their home. Uh, they don't see their entire life savings disappear. And that when the economy comes back after the pandemic, people are in a stronger position uh, to do so. Merci. Nous aimerions discuter des droits des femmes dans le monde. We would like to ask about the Conservative Party views on women. What are human rights and why are women and youth especially targeted when it comes to human rights? Why should we be especially protective of women and young people? How can we make sure women are more protected from violence? How can women receive help and support? Uh, well, uh, the Conservative Party believes in the fundamental equality of all human beings, uh, men and women, regardless of race, religion, background. Uh, we believe yeah. that uh, you have natural rights, that just by virtue of being a human being, you have rights. You have freedom of speech. You have freedom of assembly. You have uh, the right in Canada. If you're a citizen, you have the right to vote. And, and we believe very strongly uh, that uh, government programs, government policy must treat women and men equally. Uh, we believe in, equal, in the quality of opportunity, that there should be no doors closed to you just by virtue of the fact that you are a girl uh, or a woman. Now, around the world, that is not always the case. It hasn't always been the case in our own society. And, and many women work very hard uh, over the years to win the right to work uh, win the right to vote, uh, to, to win the right to have a, an equal opportunity to have a seat at the table. In many countries, that struggle is still going on. And women traditionally in many parts of the world, as they have been in, in, in our society, have been more vulnerable. They haven't always had the, the same types of, uh, of, of power, uh, of influence, the same tools that men had uh, in, in this society. And so, so there are countries around the world where it's easy to abuse the rights of women because they don't have an ability to, to, to fight back or protect themselves. And that's why uh, our conservative government previously uh, was very keen on, on, on promoting the idea of equality of opportunity for women and girls. Uh, you know, we, 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 we targeted human traffickers. We supported child and maternal health efforts to, to make sure that women in, in areas and parts of the world where they didn't have access to the same types of medicine and technology that we have here were able to uh, safely have children and, and, and raise them. Uh, so we had a lot of initiatives that were targeted precisely to help lift women out of uh, and, and girls out of a, a vulnerable position and, and, and empower them. Uh, for example, we had a program uh, providing what's called microcredit to women. Uh, there are many parts of the world where, where with a little bit of financial assistance, women can become entrepreneurs and they, uh, they, can, they can provide a, goods or services in their community, but they don't have the ability to get started. So a lot, giving them small loans to, to buy, you know, uh, buy some equipment, buy, buy something that allows them to sell some crafts or, or to provide a service in their community uh, is so essential. And education as well. We're very, uh, one of the best things you can do to, to increase the quality of living for, for vulnerable people in general, but especially women and girls in many parts of the country, uh, many parts of the world, is to make sure they have the same access to education that men or boys might have. So those are some of the initiatives that, that we, uh, we, we, we put forward. Those are some of the things that we, we, we champion. Cette question discute de justice sociale. Our name is Young Global Citizens. 
Recently, we spoke to Senator Mobina S.P. Jaffer, who committed to writing to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau about providing water to First Nation reserves who do not have access to clean water. What is your message on social justice and equality for all Canadians, especially regarding First Nations, Inuit people, and Canadian minorities? Mm. Well, the most important thing that we have to remember is that uh, the the when we talk about some of these issues, we don't want to empower the state to take away our freedoms and our liberties. Uh, the best thing you can do to lift people out of poverty, uh, to to improve the lot and the standard of living, the quality of life for people, uh, is to ensure that they have individual liberty, they have their freedom, they have that equality of opportunity, and uh, the 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 best. The best thing that ever happened to people in terms of lifting them out of poverty, in terms of providing them with a better quality of life, has been the free market. Uh, allowing people to, to buy and sell goods and services freely, that has lifted, has generated so much wealth and, and so much prosperity all around the world. Everywhere it has been tried, it has always led to a massive increase in the standard of living for, for, for its citizens. So we need to look at what has worked in the past and look at what has not worked. Big government intervention in people's lives has always produced more misery. It's always lowered the standard of living for people. It's actually made things like social justice worse in those societies. You know, if we think of countries like East East Germany, uh, North Korea right now, uh, that's where big government involvement in people's lives is taken to the extreme and, and we can see the results uh, of it. Uh, so, uh, so we in our party, we believe that ensuring that equality of opportunity, that making sure that everyone has the chance to succeed, uh, that, is, that is where the government should focus on, making sure that there are no barriers to your participation in the economy, access to education, things like that, making sure that everyone can have a, a, a similar starting point is uh, is where we're focused on. Now, as it comes to clean drinking water on, on, on reserves, this is one of those things that we believe the government must do a better job on. Our previous conservative government started a great deal of work to ensure that reserves were able to have the same types of clean drinking water that uh, off-reserve communities had. Uh, it takes dollars. Yes, it takes money. The government has to provide the funding to purchase the equipment, but it also takes a partnership with First Nations uh, in, uh, themselves because those communities, once the water treatment facility is built, have to manage it and they have to have the expertise. They have to have the trained people who know how to you know, change out a filter or, or repair it when it goes wrong. So it's not just a matter of cutting, you know, writing a check and, and, and building it, cutting a ribbon and walking away. It takes an ongoing partnership. Uh, and we do believe that uh, First Nations people on reserve and uh, have the same right to, to, to clean drinking water as everybody else. We, you know, I live in Regina. If, if, uh, if the city of Regina had a boil water advisory, we'd be very upset. We'd say, what the heck are, is our mayor doing? What the heck are our city councils doing if we can't drink the water that's coming out of the tap? And we wouldn't put up with it uh, for very long. And if the mayor didn't figure out how to do it, she, you know, she'd probably lose the next election. Uh, so we need to have that same type of partnership with, with, uh, with 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 uh, band councils to make sure that they've got the tools they need, the expertise they need, because those individuals on that reserve have the same right to expect a clean glass of water when they turn on the tap as anybody off reserve. And we're certainly very committed to to proposing concrete ideas to how we can accomplish that goal. Merci. Merci. We would like to know more about the Conservative Party platform. Many of our parents have their own opinions about politics, but we are still trying to make up our own minds. Last year, we conducted a student vote in our school. We did well in our vote. We would like to know some distinguishing features of the Conservative Party that you would like to teach us about. Well, thanks very much. And uh, of course, when it comes to specifics, uh, our new leader, Aaron O'Toole, will 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 design and, and, and write a platform with, with his team and present that to Canadians. But in general, uh, you, can, you, you can differentiate your, you know, the difference between Liberals and Conservatives and those on the left from those more on the right uh, with a couple of key principles. Uh, and that is uh, Conservatives believe in empowering individuals. We believe that in your natural rights as a human being. And we know that often when government comes along with a solution, that there are unintended consequences that are often worse than the problem that is trying to be solved. And so the liberals like to, like to say, well, if there's a problem in society, the government's the answer. Government should do something. 
and conservatives believe that there is more to society than just government. Uh, society and government are two completely different things. Uh, society is uh, free people interacting with each other based on mutual benefit according to our own wishes and desires. Government is an authority that is there to restrict our freedom and our liberty. And so anytime we invite government into the room to solve a problem, we have to consider the uh, the impacts of that. So we're always looking at a lens to say, okay, if there's a problem in society, what can we do to address it that, that maybe empowers local communities, empowers volunteer associations, empowers just people wanting to address it? And let's use that first. And, you know, there are some situations where government will be the answer. You know, we have a military, we have our national defense will obvi obviously be run and managed by government. Um, roads, public utilities are often, there are many things in, in our society that make sense to have the government run and administer these programs, but it's not always true across the board. So we place a great emphasis on freedom and, in, and individual liberty, whereas uh, other parties tend to talk more about collectivization, you know, the, 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 the collective versus the individual. Uh, we believe on improving the individual as a way to improve society, whereas those on the left tend to uh, want to do it more of a top-down approach. And fundamentally, we believe uh, in, uh, in the power of the free market to create prosperity, to create wealth, and to have better outcomes for everybody, whereas those in other parties tend to think that the government does a better job of managing things. And of course, as a conservative, I'll give you my, my personal take on that. I think if you go and you look at any country where the government has a, a great deal of involvement in the economy and people's lives and, 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 and deciding what you can and can't do, uh, you always have worse outcomes. And so we believe in, in a rising tide lifting all boats and not necessarily trying to, uh, uh, what the other parties do would, would be to tear some people down to, uh, to achieve, uh, uh, you know, uh, different outcomes. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Madame Legault, j'aimerais que vous présentiez votre école et les quelques questions que vous avez préparées. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour. We are in Alberta. Um, and first we have uh, Simon to ask a, couple, a question and then Sebastian and then Paige and Dominic. Okay. Thank you very much for doing this. My pleasure. Bonjour, Monsieur Chir. J'ai une question comme un dirigeant que tu es. Quelles qualités sont importantes selon vous pour être les futurs dirigeants? Uh, C'est essentiel d'avoir un uh, sens de vos principes. Uh, il, y a, il, il y a dit que la politique, c'est l'art de la compromis. Et c'est vrai. Uh, il n'y a pas uh, 35 millions de partis dans, dans notre pays. Uh, il y a seulement quelques. Et uh, c'est essentiel quand, you know, même si j'ai uh, 7 ou 8 uh, uh, collègues qui sont tout conservateur, nous pouvons trouver les différences entre nous. Uh, Peut-être un un de nos députés veut faire quelque chose de différent qu'un autre. Et on doit choisir un, un, un groupe de, de politiques, des enjeux qu'on peut uh, trouver le terrain en commun et faire des compromis pour, pour um, avoir des gains, avoir des, des, des réussites. Mais c'est essentiel de déterminer avant que vous commencez quels sont les principes fondamentaux que je ne peux pas changer parce qu'il y a une partie de moi même comme mon cheveu, mon peau, c'est une partie de moi-même essentielle. Je ne peux pas compromettre sur ces, ces, euh, ces enjeux parce que dans les politiques, toujours il y a des personnes qui disent « Ok, faire un petit compromis ici ou là et on peut bouger quelque chose. » Mais vous, vous, devez avoir, vous devez avoir un sens clair de vos principes, vos essentiels euh, position. Uh, deuxième chose, vous, avez, vous, vous, avez, uh, vous devez avoir un une sens de service pour votre communauté parce que dans notre pays, dans notre, dans notre uh, système parlementaire, je ne suis pas un une, une, une roi philosophe. Uh, en anglais, c'est philosopher king. C'est un, une, uh, une image que Plato a uh, utilisée nous n'avons pas une société avec les, les, les grands chefs qui sont mieux de, de, de nous et qui font des décisions pour nous. 
je suis un, un serviteur de mon comté, de mes, de mes euh, constituants, mes électeurs. Euh, ils, ils sont mon patron. Euh, je, je dois euh, représenter leurs intérêts, leurs besoins pour leur communauté. Alors, d'avoir un sens de service pour votre communauté, c'est essentiel. Et euh, une peau euh, et, a thick skin, I guess. <rire> je ne peux pas trouver les mots en français, mais um, uh, la le, le, le première fois que vous présentez comme un candidat, les autres parties, le média, les gens que vous peut-être uh, appuyez une autre partie, uh, commencent les attaques et c'est essentiel de savoir que c'est une, une, une partie de le, le, le rôle et uh, de trouver une façon de, 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 pas, de, de, de ne permettre pas mm -hmm. qu'ils posent des inquiétudes pour vous. Euh, bonjour. Cette question porte sur le changement climatique. How can this generation help avoid a climate crisis that would devastate uh, the earth? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, like anything else, uh, we uh, are called to be good stewards of the earth. Uh, we were given this gift of creation uh, to, to benefit from, you know, we, we are, we are, allowed, we are supposed to be here and we're allowed to be here. Uh, and we have a role to play in, in, in finding that balance between uh, improving our quality of living and, and helping eliminate misery and, and, and difficult conditions for people while at the same time recognizing that we have inherited a path patrimony that we have to hand on uh, to future generations. So that, that, that call to being good stewards of the land, of the air, of the water is very important. And I think it's great that so many uh, young people are, are, are having a, an awareness about their role to have a to minimize the impact, negative impacts on, on the environment. Uh, we also have to recognize the, 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 the very many benefits that come with technological advancements. You know, the, the ability, I'm not sure what the weather's like in, a, in Okotoks, but when I was in Regina, it was starting to get a little bit cold, you know, and, and you'll, you'll, many of your parents will probably buy fresh fruits and vegetables in January. Uh, very, very affordable. And, you, you know, you, we think nothing of, of going to the grocery store and getting a, a bunch of bananas in January. And, and you wouldn't expect to pay more than maybe a, a, a dollar to a pound for them. Well, that is because of the benefits that we have with technological advancements, with being able to transport fresh fruits and vegetables from places uh, where it's warm to places where it's cold. And we have to have an awareness to say, okay, we have eliminated a great deal of human suffering with some of these advancements. So we have to have a view of minimizing our impact on, on the environment, not causing undue harm to the environment, finding that balance while at the same time recognizing that uh, some of the things that we do, you know, Uh, developing our oil and gas sector, for example, has eliminated a great deal of suffering and, and poverty around the world. And, and, and that is important too. That's why our party, when we talked about climate change, we talked about reducing global emissions, recognizing that in Canada, we're able to do things at a much more efficient rate than other countries. We can take a barrel of oil out of the ground here and refine it here with very high environmental standards, with very high protections against both emissions and, and what's being put into our rivers and lakes. And uh, sometimes doing more things here in Canada can lower emissions because other countries don't have that same ability. They don't have the same environmental rules. They don't have the same regulations. So we've always uh, had uh, a balanced approach, uh, taking into account the, the, the real evidence, you know, the, the real science behind what's going on with our climate, uh, having a, a, a view towards Canada playing its, its part, but also recognizing that uh, we can do more for the planet by focusing on global uh, emissions than, uh, than just narrowly looking Uh, in isolation, what's going on here in Canada. So, you know, all the things that you're being taught about reducing, reusing, recycling, uh, uh, thinking about excessive packaging, you know, uh, uh, all the investments that are being made into f uh, more fuel efficient cars and more fuel efficient furnaces. I know my furnace that I bought in my new house was, you know, orders of magnitude more efficient than the furnace I had in my first house. And I benefit, maybe cost a few more dollars on buying a new furnace, but I'm paying less money for, for natural gas every month. There's fewer pounds of CO2 being emitted into the atmosphere. So those types of, of uh, focuses are, are very important and, and, it's, and it's great that young people today are, are having a mind to that. We started Young Global Citizens Movement three years ago, but we need more support and expertise. Do you have 
advice for us? How can we build a strong network and make a real difference in the world? Uh, absolutely. I think anytime people come together over common issues, uh, you, ha you already started down the path. And so the fact that there are so many classrooms across the, can uh, the country linked together today to talk about these issues is a great sign. Um, you know, the, I would I would suggest that you uh, find some individuals that that share this goal and, and ask them for support. Uh, I know when I was a young person getting involved in groups often meant doing some fundraising to, <laughs> to find some people who, who maybe shared the same goal that we had to and maybe didn't have the time or, you know, uh, ability to, to, to to put effort behind it, but could spare a few dollars to help, you know, pay for some of the costs associated with that. So they're always, they're always uh, entrepreneurs and business people and corporations looking to empower young people and and to and to partner with that. I would certainly suggest, uh, you know, looking at some of that. But staying in touch, developing this network, supporting it after you graduate. If if this organization has worked well for you and you've got value out of it, then when you're able to, as a as you enter the workforce give some time, give some resources yourself and encourage other people to continue on so that those that come after you uh, have an even more, uh, you know, have an even better experience through uh, through this organization. Merci. In closing, Mr. Shear, is there a question that we didn't ask you, but you feel we should have asked? No, I think this has been a great survey of topics. I would, uh, I would encourage you to to do a lot of uh, a lot of reading. Uh, some of the best things you can do at this age is to absorb some uh, some 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 political thoughts. Some so look at what other thinkers have written about it, and kind of you know decide for yourself what what you believe uh, works best. Uh, there's some wonderful material out there, and and one of the things I I worry about is you know. The, our young people today learning some of the lessons of of the past. You know, do we know what happened in in the Soviet bloc countries in Europe? You know, are we aware of the struggles that went on? Those who lived under big socialist government, who fought so hard and took generations to to free themselves of, are we learning some of those lessons so that we don't make the same mistakes here? And and every time I see a poll where it says young people are more and more comfortable with socialism, uh, or in Commun former communist countries, you know, nowadays they say that there's more support in Russia for Stalin uh, than there was when, when he was still alive. That concerns me because as human beings, we, we tend to make the same mistakes over and over again. And there are many, many people who, who went down that path and told us what to avoid. And, and I hope that, that all of you study that. You know, you, you may not agree with everything I say, you may not agree with every policy, but you should at least look and see what those people who experienced the, the horrors of, of big government intrusion into our lives and the economy, what did they have to say? What lessons did they learn? What led to, to their societies being open to having that? So I would encourage you to do some readings for people, uh, learn about Lech Walesa and Vaclav Havel. These are two people who, uh, who helped um, uh, take down the, the communist regimes in, in their countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, there's some wonderful uh, philosophical statements about the role of government in our lives. And I would just encourage you to do a broad cross section of reading, really, really look at all different viewpoints at this point in your life. Uh, make sure you're aware of, of what's out there and then determine for yourself as you grow older, what makes, uh, what makes sense to you. Thank you. Alors, je dis merci à l'école Percy Pegler, Autotox, Alberta. Bravo les enfants, vous êtes super. I, I'm getting feedback from other schools as we are speaking and they all love you. You did great. Oh. <laughs> okay, everybody, we're so proud. And, and eight provinces and, and Yukon joined us. We hope in our future interviews, we have all provinces. And we hope we get to talk to you again, Mr. Shear. Merci beaucoup. C'était mon plaisir. Uh, merci beaucoup pour l'opportunité. Thank you so much for this. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. And I'm just, it's so encouraging to see so many people, young people your age, taking an interest. When I was 12 or 13 years old, uh, when I started talking politics around the cafeteria table, I, I often found myself alone by the end of the lunch hour. So uh, it's great to see so many of you getting engaged, understanding why these things are important and, and educating yourself on it. And, and, and thank you to the teachers for, for, for providing uh, this type of interaction. Well, let our principal say goodbye. Madame Maikai. Yep. Thank, merci. thank you, everyone, and uh, especially to the students and the teachers for guiding them in, this, uh, in, in the interviews and the questions. Monsieur Scheer, quel honneur. Merci encore. 
Thank you for your service. And again, to your family and um, to your team that helped us in preparing this uh, time together. Um, I would like to also thank you for your initiatives, for offering us a different perspective for our students to uh, think critically, as we had said earlier, but also for spotlighting um, equal opportunity in education, as well as the importance of partnership with First Nations. And uh, we wish you, we, pr we continue to pray for you and hope it all always goes well for you. Um, thank you again for having given so much of your time to um, our society, to our, to our life as humans. And uh, we hope to be able to follow in some of the footsteps you have already set for us. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. 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 Bye.